Good afternoon. I'm Greg Hart, Chair of the Santa Barbara County Board of Supervisors. This press conference is broadcasting on County TV Channel 20 and the county's YouTube page. The meeting is being interpreted in American Sign Language by Joe Black, and Carlos Saraceto is interpreting the press conference in Spanish. His interpretation will be available on the county's website and YouTube page shortly after we conclude this press conference. The second wave of the coronavirus pandemic is working its way around the globe and the United States. A few months ago, a second wave of the virus was a fear for the future. It's now a reality. Dr. David Fisk, Medical Director for Infection Control at Cottage Health and a Sansom Clinic doctor, said this week in an interview, it's likely the drop in COVID-19 patients that we're seeing in our region is temporary and numbers will go back up in coming months. We're seeing very, very concerning trends in the Midwest and other parts of the United States. He continued, they're seeing all-time record highs in the number of cases and hospitals are at or over capacity in some communities. The consequences of a second wave of COVID-19 infections in our community are very serious. If cases or the test positivity rate were to increase significantly, the progress we've made together as a community could be reversed and under the governor's color coding system, businesses would again be subjected to operating restrictions and closures. The existence of a second wave of community spread in other parts of the country is very concerning and should give us pause. We cannot control what's happening in other parts of the country, but California's careful and cautious public health strategy should serve us better than the states that have reopened too soon. Individually, we can each take critical steps to limit the spread of the virus by maintaining our own diligence and attention to detail. Halloween is coming in a few weeks and trick-or-treating in the traditional way is a very real public health threat that should not be ignored. Please don't think the virus is in the past and it's safe to go trick-or-treating door to door. The best way to approach Halloween this year is to limit your celebrations to your own household or celebrate virtually. Recently, Governor Newsom relaxed state public health guidance regarding gatherings. The County of Santa Barbara's Public Health Department has decided to not loosen our local health officer guidance regarding gatherings at this time. Dr. Doe Reynoso and Dr. Anzarg are being careful and cautious because community spread of the virus in Santa Barbara County remains a concern and we do not want to jeopardize the progress we've made moving from the purple to the red tier. I want to thank the members of our community who have heeded our call to get tested for COVID-19. Increased testing allows the Public Health Department to quickly identify infectious people and isolate and quarantine them before potential outbreaks cause the virus to spread. Increased testing has also benefited our state COVID-19 report card and led to a downward adjustment to our state case metrics. The numbers from the past week are encouraging, but it is, no, it is by no means a certainty that our next state report card will put us in the orange tier. Please remain careful about wearing masks at all times when you are outdoors or can't keep at least six feet of distance from others and continue to frequently wash your hands. As part of our response to the pandemic, the County of Santa Barbara has participated in the state's Project Room Key program, an effort to provide supportive housing to medically vulnerable individuals who are experiencing homelessness. Originally created to provide people with a safe place to stay from COVID-19, the program is now helping people transition into permanent housing. I'm happy to report that as of yesterday, the county has placed 34 people into permanent housing six of those placements taking place in the past week alone. The county continues to provide care to dozens of people at a time through the Project Room Key program and will work to continue to place more people into permanent housing in the weeks ahead. Disrupting chronic homelessness is a challenging task during the best of times, let alone during a pandemic. I would like to thank the dedicated staff of our county's homeless assistance program and our community partners for changing lives every day by connecting people with housing and supportive services. As flu season begins, we must remember the continued threat of a twindemic, the spread of both the seasonal influenza and COVID-19. On top of the health challenges that one could experience if infected by both the flu and COVID-19, Many health experts are concerned about how a bad flu season could impact our medical system and impede COVID-19 response efforts. All of us can prevent the spread of the seasonal flu by getting vaccinated. 
Over the past two weeks, more than 3,700 community members participated in the county's senior housing flu shot clinics and the drive-up flu shot clinics in Santa Barbara, Lompoc, and Santa Maria. All residents are encouraged to get a flu shot by contacting their medical provider, a local health center, or a pharmacy. Flu vaccines are generally accessible with no out-of-pocket cost as they are fully covered by most health insurance plans, Medicare, and Medi-Cal. For more information on the county's seasonal flu program, please visit the Public Health Department's website. Next, we have Dr. Vonda Reynoso, Director of the County's Department of Public Health. Thank you, Supervisor Hart. In looking at our case rate and testing positivity rates, I'm glad to see that we are continuing to see a downward trend. But in order for us to move to the less restrictive orange tier, we will need to decrease our adjusted case rate to 1 to 3.9 per 100,000 or no more than 17 for our county population. Our overall testing positivity has to be less than 4.9% and our health equity metric testing positivity has to be less than 5.2%. I would like to thank everyone in our community for doing your part to decrease transmission of COVID-19 in our county. I am worried though, with Halloween coming up in a few weeks, that we may see new cases due to gatherings and celebrations. Because we are in a pandemic where COVID-19 spread is substantial in our community, no one should be participating in the traditional trick-or-treating this year. Our guidance provides a modified trick-or-treating plan so that we all can have fun in a safe manner. You can find the Halloween guidance on our website at publichealthsbc.org. We have ideas listed on how you can reduce the risk of spreading COVID-19 during Halloween. Essentially, we are asking our community to wear their face covering correctly during Halloween festivities, even while outdoors. Trick-or-treaters must maintain six feet physical distance from others and practice good hygiene. If you are sick or have been in contact with someone who is sick with COVID-19 or who has symptoms of COVID-19, please stay home and stay away from others. Be ready for trick-or-treaters. When passing out candy, consider a plan for social distancing and directly, not directly touching the candy. Again, during Halloween festivities, please take care of yourself and protect others around you by being diligent to wear your mask when you are outside, with, outside of your home by maintaining at least six feet from others and by limiting gathering with others outside your household. With regards to access to testing, we have expanded our testing capacity in Isla Vista. Our next testing event in Isla Vista will be on October 23rd and 24th and November 6th and 7th. We may be adding additional days if needed. Lastly, please join me in congratulating Dr. Ansorg I'm being honored as Physician of the Year for Santa Barbara County by the Central Coast Medical Society. I don't think this pandemic was what he had in mind when he accepted our appointment for him to be health officer for our county. I appreciate his unwavering commitment to protect the health of our community and his wonderful sense of humor, which keeps the team grounded and certainly diffuses intense moments during our response efforts. Kudos to you, Dr. Ansorg, and congratulations on a well-deserved recognition. Thank you, Dr. Doronoso. And Dr. Henning Ansorg, the county's public health officer, is also here with us today. Thank you, Supervisor Hart and Dr. Doronoso. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to summarize some key findings about the coronavirus and how this new information is guiding our recommendations and health orders. Even though Santa Barbara County has now been in the less restrictive second or red tier for about two and a half weeks, 
The virus has by no means left the area, nor has it become less contagious. We now know for certain that this virus easily spreads from person to person and sometimes can remain suspended in the air or travel farther than six feet and still be contagious. More than 90% of all people in Santa Barbara County are still susceptible and at risk of catching this virus. The vast majority of new infections are caused by persons who are still feeling well and are spreading the virus unknowingly. About 8% of these contagious individuals function as so-called super spreaders. And they cause about 60% of all new infections. There is no way of knowing if a person who is physically close to you might be infectious or even a super spreader. At this point in the pandemic, the only way to protect ourselves from a possible infection is keeping a distance, avoid gatherings, avoid travel, wear a mask, and wash your hands frequently. We are very concerned about the significant rise in new cases across the country. With the holiday season starting, many of these national hotspots will unfortunately cause significant spread to other areas by means of travel, family visits, and household gatherings. I urge everyone, at this time, please avoid travel. Please make other plans for this holiday season. Do not gather, especially not indoors. Avoid all crowds and events where people come together. We have the means to protect ourselves and our loved ones with these proven actions. Thank you for your cooperation. I'd like to add my congratulations to Dr. Anzorg for receiving the Physician of the Year Award. The Board of Supervisors and the entire county family is very proud of the work that you have done as the county's public health officer this year. We're really grateful for the calm, professional diligence and your attention to detail. And the Santa Barbara County residents are very fortunate to have benefited from Dr. Ansorg's public health leadership this year. Congratulations. We also have um, Suzanne Grimacy, who's here today from the Department of Behavioral Wellness to talk about the ongoing mental health impacts of the pandemic and how we can manage this very uncertain time. Thank you, Supervisor Hart. Good afternoon. I would like to talk today about our current place of being in between, not there yet, and needing to wait. We've made it with the collective hard work of our community to the red tier. The tangible movement from the purple tier to the red tier was more than exciting. It's allowed businesses to reopen many with modifications, with limited capacity, but nonetheless being able to move forward. So an exciting movement, but no doubt also filled with confusion, both the businesses and the general community. Can we gather now? No. Do we have to wear our masks all the time? Yes. Do businesses have new guidelines? No, the same industry guidelines. Do businesses have to complete new attestations? No. Can we sing again in church? No. So many questions, and of course the greatest wonder of all, how long until we move to the orange tier? Answer, don't know. We are in an in-between, not there yet, and what we must wait place. And this is a hard place to be in. I've heard many references to living life in a pandemic as being similar to a marathon. I've never run a marathon, though I have all the respect in the world to those that have, but I have had experiences in participating in triathlons. If one were to pause or slow down because they'd made it halfway through the race, no doubt they would impact their end time. I think back to riding my bike up a hill during a race. If I were to have been halfway there and therefore paused or slowed down, it's unlikely I would have made it up the hill at all. Momentum 
is something to cherish. And when getting close to the end of a race and hearing the crowds cheering and hearing the music playing was all that was needed to help make it past the finish line. But even then, if we were to slow down and give less than 100% of whatever energy we had less, we wouldn't have made it across the finish line with the same time. In between, not quite there yet. We don't know when our finish line will be, but we do know that we have to keep trying hard, staying vigilant until that time arrives. It's also so important to remember that it's absolutely okay to say that things don't feel okay right now. How could they possibly? It's important each day for us to recognize the time and the space that we need to recharge. It's important to ask for help and support when needed. Many things are feeling a lot harder to tackle now than they did just a few months ago. We must keep placing our mental health and our physical health as our top priority. We are fortunate that in our county, we have not seen an increase in deaths by suicide. However, that does not mean that the stress of the pandemic is not taking a toll on many people. I can say that we are seeing a higher rate of opioid overdoses, higher rate of treatment requests from people with opioid addictions seeking treatment. We're seeing higher numbers of people entering treatment, and we're seeing higher numbers of opioid reversals, the use of Narcan to review, reverse the impact and the symptoms of an overdose and to save a person's life. In addition, behavioral wellness oversees the access line. We have not seen an increase in our call volume, but the call screeners on the line will tell you that they've seen a greater intensity overall in the calls. They've seen more calls from family members seeking services for their loved ones. Our behavioral wellness mobile crisis team remains active and responds to mental health and substance abuse crises. If you or a loved one is experiencing that, time, that type of a crisis, the 24, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the access line can be called. The number is 888-868-1649. In closing, I have spoken before about resiliency and the five things needed to help people and communities to make it through and to bounce back from a hard time. I'd like to read those again. The first is caring and support. The second, high expectations for success, believing that together we can make it through. The third, opportunities for meaningful participation. Four, positive bonds, those relationships that form during hard times. And fifth, the ability to adapt. We are a resilient community, and especially good as we need this right now to continue to keep going, to stay vigilant, and to maintain our collective momentum as we remain in this challenging place of in between, not there yet, and needing to wait a bit longer. We will get there, and when we do, we can celebrate the fact that we did it together. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne, for your thoughtful, inspiring words. Next, we'll go to questions in the room. Mr. Devine. Uh, first question for me, just for Vaughn. Uh, no more than 17 new cases per day for the Orange Deer, is that correct? Correct. Okay. And then uh, for Halloween, what areas specifically are you most concerned about as far as geographic? Is it the neighborhoods or is it the college scene or is it downtown bars? Where, where is the most concern? All concerned? of the above. All of the above. We are worried where people gather is an area of concern and that we anticipate will be all over our county. Okay. And then today and yesterday there was a death of someone from Santa Maria. Are these from the Santa Maria Acute Care Facility? I don't have that information. Dr. Answer, do you? I do know that there have been several deaths at that facility, um, but um, our policy is that we um, only state if there are more than 11. 
So we don't know if the, the exact ones number from yesterday. Of this, that has not been confirmed of this uh, most recent uh, death was linked to that facility, sorry. And then how concerned are you guys still with the outbreak that's going on at that particular facility? Yeah, we are still very actively involved, obviously, with the state health department and their licensing agency as well. Um, the outbreak was very severe in that facility. Um, t t the vast majority of, of residents caught the virus. The good news is that more than half of them are through the isolation period and are have recovered. Um, that is good news, and we're anticipating more people to clear out of isolation in the coming days. And in total, how many um, total cases now and deaths as of right now? So, um, as of two hours ago, we had 41 positive cases out of a sense of 47, so that's a huge amount. Um, and the exact amount of deaths are um, less than 11, but the exact number is not um, confirmed yet. Okay, thank you. And then I guess with other parts of the country experiencing a second wave, um, do you guys anticipate the virus to possibly travel from our, to our county from other parts of the county over holiday season, particularly with Thanksgiving? Absolutely, that's, that's very concerning. Um, that is exactly the uh, nightmare scenario for a situation like this, that people congregate at hot spots in different parts of the country just for three, four days, and then travel back uh, um, to other areas and then um, are infected and then spread it further. So that's how a virus creates huge pandemics. And that's why I, in, in my plea to everyone, make different plans this year. This year has to be different. Avoid travel. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Mr. Devine. Next, we'll go to questions on the phone. Yes, first up, we have Malia with Santa Maria Sun. Hi there. Um, I'm wondering how the county's equity metric is doing and whether you anticipate that this would be the most difficult metric for us to hit in order to move into the orange tier? Um, if not, which metric do you think will be most uh, challenging for us to hit? I think that the health equity metric, uh, we saw it is on the uh, decline from the first time that the state assigned us. It is also trending downwards. Um, with regards to addressing the health equity metric, we are doubling down on our community uh, outreach with our partners, both in Santa Maria and in Isla Vista. And we will be starting a focus work group in uh, Lompoc area to address opportunities to mitigate the spread of disease in that area. So compared to the other metrics, which one would you say is our greatest challenge as far as uh, trying to make it into that orange tier? Um, I believe that it will be the health equity metric. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Malia. That actually concludes our Q&A. Thank you for the questions. Uh, the Board of Supervisors will hear a COVID-19 update from Dr. Dorinoso and the County Public Health Department on Tuesday, October 20th. The meeting begins at 9 a.m., but the COVID update is the second item on the agenda, so it'll likely be closer to 10 a.m. The county's newest weekly state report card status will be announced at that time. Our next press conference will be held a week from today on Friday, October 23rd at 4.30 p.m. If you have any questions, please call the 211 information line. Local information on COVID-19 and access to support and services is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week in multiple languages. Please continue to practice these three simple personal steps each day. Remember to wear a face covering and stay at least six feet apart from other people. Number two, wash your hands thoroughly and often. Don't touch your face and disinfect surfaces. And number three, if you feel sick, stay home. Don't go to work and isolate yourself. Call your doctor or clinic and follow their medical advice. Thank you for joining us today. Please be kind, considerate, and patient in your interactions with others. We are stronger together, safely apart.